What's up YouTube, it's Ben, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you how to lower your tax bill. Alrighty guys, if you're not familiar with my channel, my name is Ben Nader. I do videos on entrepreneurship, business, finance, investing, real estate, and apparently lowering your tax bill. All right, so without me saying anything further, you already know what I'm gonna say right here, right now. This is not to be construed as any professional legal and or tax advice, but I kind of know a thing or two. All right, so let's start off by saying the obvious. When you have tax problems, these are actually good problems to have. That means you made a lot of money and these tax problems aren't really problems because it's just by nature. It's just how our country is set up. I'm speaking specifically about the United States because other countries have way different tax systems than us, but I wanna to talk to entrepreneurs that are in the United States making lots of money and how to lower that tax bill. These tax problems come up when you're a high income earner. Now the IRS defines a high income earner as anyone that makes over $250,000 annually. Well, I'm gonna be using some higher math than that, more like a million dollars annually for some math that's easy and for us to digest at mathematically and for more so for me to actually digest mathematically on the fly since I don't have a calculator right here. But we're gonna go through exactly how you can get your adjusted gross income down, therefore your tax bill goes way, way down. Okay, so my first strategy for you here is the taxes that you've already paid throughout the year. Generally speaking, if you're an LLC or an S Corp, they will have you paying quarterly taxes. You'll have to pay taxes on the month, on the gross revenue, gross receipts, as they say, on all of that quarterly. So you have to send in a quarterly payment that's based upon whatever that amount is every single quarter, four times for the entire year. So those taxes are already paid, done, and clear. All right, so my second strategy here is employ people. Employ 1099 workers to work in your business. Now, I understand if your business is too small to actually have people employed, but if you have the ability and your business is growing, exploding, employ people. Get people on your 1099s, send them out, have them do work for you, and every single dollar that you pay them is dollar for dollar a tax deduction for you. So if you paid somebody $100,000 for the year, your adjusted gross income goes down by $100,000, which means you'll be taxed that much less. All right, so number three, and this is one that's really, really funny because I know a lot of you guys have watched all those TikToks out there about all these entrepreneurs and why they're buying these G-Wagons or why they're buying these Range Rovers or why they're buying these Escalades and all that kind of stuff. Well, there's a specific reason for it and it's called Section 179 of the tax code. Go ahead, Google it, look it up. It's the vehicle business tax deduction. Effectively, what it means is any vehicle that's over 6,000 pounds, if you purchase it outright or finance it, doesn't matter either way, you can deduct the entire purchase price of the vehicle as bonus depreciation. I'll get back to what depreciation means in a second, but you can deduct that amount while getting the vehicle. Now it is a business vehicle, so you do have to prove that you're utilizing it for business purposes. You can also use it for personal purposes, but there needs to be a really, really nice ratio of that. So yes, you can get that G-Wagon if you have the money to put the down payment down and then finance that thing out. You've got a G-Wagon, and you're rolling around and you got a tax deduction. Along with the vehicle deduction is everything that goes with the vehicle. That means detailing the vehicle, putting all your gas in the vehicle. That means literally anything that has to do with the vehicle, insurance, anything, like, like anything, anything that has to do with that vehicle goes towards your deductions. So basically you're gonna have a line item in your taxes, right? Where you're gonna put all the things related to that vehicle and every single one of them will be tax deductions. So you'll save a lot just by having that business vehicle. All right, so number four, super easy, right? You need to have health insurance. 
And as an entrepreneur, you're going to have your own health insurance plan. You're not a W-2 employee anymore, so you're getting your own health insurance plan from whatever carrier you want, for whatever price point you want. You get to pick your own package. But with that package, let's just say it's 400 bucks a month that you pay for health insurance. Well, at the end of the year, all of that is deductible. So your health insurance premiums are deductible. So get that. That's pretty cool, right? All right, so I wanna go back to depreciation, just like I said before. So this applies to a lot of other things. Now listen, the government really, really encourages you not to stack cash. They don't want you to do that. They don't love that, right? They want you to invest either in your business or invest in other things, right? So either take all the money, all the profits, all the revenue, and just reinvest into your business so that it's not taxable income, or invest that money into other ventures, other businesses, right? So buy other businesses, like go out and buy yourself another recruiting agency and take that book of business and bring it into your own, right? And then depreciate the purchase of that business and all the assets that came with it. And depreciation basically means that you take an offset, right? So it's paper depreciation. The asset doesn't actually depreciate, right? So the vehicle doesn't actually depreciate. It's not breaking down while you drive it off the lot, brand new, 2022. Like what we're talking about here is paper depreciation. That means effectively you get to say, well, I just bought a $200,000 vehicle, a G-Wagon, right? Actually, it's more like 250. $250,000 vehicle, just bought it. I get to take the depreciation, AKA the full amount of that entire vehicle's price and deduct it off of your taxes. That's what depreciation means in a nutshell without explaining a little bit in detail more. Now here's another form of investing that you can basically avoid more taxation, Airbnbs. You can buy real estate. This is why so many people are in real estate to begin with. You know those people that make 10 million, 20 million, 50 million dollars a year? They don't care about the Airbnb cash flowing. All they care about is buying the real estate itself and then depreciating the real estate itself. Allowing the real estate literally to depreciate right in front of their face for that year so they can utilize all of that depreciation, which is approximately 30% of the value of the home minus the value of the land, when you take that depreciation, which could be $500,000, million, $2 million, $3 million, whatever it is, you get to literally offset that right off your taxes, and that's a nice, clean investment to get your tax bill lower. Okay, so there's so many other little things that you're not thinking of, right? Your home office deduction, right? Whatever the space is inside of the space that you fully use, like your apartment, if it's a thousand square feet and you utilize 400 square feet to utilize for business purposes, that's your office area, that's your home office, you do a simple calculation of the amount of rent you pay fully for the place that you live minus what that square footage would be for the office space and that becomes a deduction month over month over month added up all into one lump sum that'll take a huge chunk out of your taxes now also keep in mind things like utilities those are deductions keep in mind things like your cell phone you use that for business right of course your internet bill you use that for business absolutely Keep in mind all these little things, they all add up. So you absolutely have to itemize your deductions, be super organized with every single dollar that you spend in anything related to your business. The very camera that I'm shooting this video on is a deduction. Why? Because it's something related to my business. This microphone right here is a deduction for me. It's because it's related to my business. The light that's shining on me right now to make me look nice and pretty is a deduction. It's all related to my business. Every single thing is, even this very desk right here. Guys, when you see people like big gurus, Grant Cardone or Ty Lopez or whoever it is, right? Buying these like exotic cars or jets or helicopters or these massive crazy yachts or whatever they are, understand they're not trying to flash. They're not trying to flex. They're not trying to be really, really cool. 
They're trying to be smart. Understand Grant Cardone bought a couple of jets. Those jets, he depreciated the value of them, right? I don't know what the exact cost of them were, but let's say it's $20 million for the jet, $30, $40 million for the jet. He probably had a tax bill of somewhere near $500 million, something like that, somewhere in that ballpark, because he buys so much real estate and makes so much income. So he has to offset that by buying assets that can be depreciated, right? So as soon as he buys that jet, boom, that $50 million purchase is wiped right off the tax bill instantly. Guys, there's so much more that I could talk to you about taxes, and I actually love talking about this. I could totally nerd out about this all day long, but I'll do more videos on this and more specifically on real estate and investing in real estate Airbnbs that actually cash flow. So it makes total sense when you buy investments that actually pay you, right? Cool things like that or a jet for Grant Cardone that he can actually travel around and do speaking gigs and travel to places in light speed, things like that. That stuff's really cool. But the reality of it is you have to play the game. It's all a big game, right? And the IRS wants you to play the game in their rule book. So you gotta play it by their rule book because you don't wanna do anything that's tax evasion or tax avoidance in an illegal way or anything that's gonna land you in prison or anything crazy like that. You don't wanna touch any of that stuff. And I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about all 100% legal ways that entrepreneurs every single day utilize to lower their adjusted gross income and therefore lower their tax bill, sometimes down to literally zero and or carryover credit. So they have carryover credit for their next year's tax bill. All right, guys, I think that's enough for right now. That was a lot of information. Hopefully you digested some of that. I definitely want you guys to understand that one thing matters here, tax prep, tax planning, and tax projections start in January, okay? They start at the beginning of the year and they continue throughout the entire year. You wanna understand what your projected revenues are, what your KPIs are, where you think you're gonna land on December 31st of the end of that year so that you can prepare properly and understand exactly what do I need to invest in? Where do I need to put my money? How do I need to convert my money into this X, Y, Z, Z? All of that. You need to understand how that works so that you could be paying the least amount of taxes and optimizing your wealth and your riches. Because you're making lots of money, you might as well make that money work for you. So with that being said, guys, I hope you found a lot of value in this video. I put a lot of nuggets in here. Watch it twice. You probably need to since it's tax time or it's coming towards the end of the year at least. Definitely subscribe to this channel if you got some content value out of this. Absolutely join our Facebook group, Recruiter Empire. Link in description. It's right there down below the video. And I will see you guys next time.